Hey everybody, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms. Today is the day after training camp actually opened up. And I can't tell you how excited I was. I was giddy when I was seeing all the videos popping up on Twitter. And obviously it's just day one of camp. And I'm going to preface all of this stuff by saying what is today is not going to be gospel the rest or what is yesterday was not going to be gospel the rest of training camp they're going to try different things out players are going to move around their positions and i'm going to have a little bit to talk about about trey smith specifically and i think we're going to start off by talking a little bit about mccole hardman and his really what comes down to it this is a season that he has to have Andy Reid said you know that he's looking forward to a big year from McColl and really it's a big year for him and it is it's the year that most receivers take that step regardless of the off seasons that they had the majority of these these receivers they come in you know it takes a while to get acclimated to the NFL learn the offense and then take that step forward McColl's had all the opportunity to be a you know talented player he's getting, he's have he has all the talent Excuse me. But that's the thing. He's got to figure everything out on the field now. And it's been come it's been made known that he did not participate any in any kind of off season workouts with Patrick Mahomes to try to get on the same page, something that they struggled with last year. Now I'm not I'm not gonna say that it's gonna have a hugely ridiculous impact on how he ends up playing this year. But I will say that it's a little weird that you didn't. Uh, he didn't. He decided not to try to, you know, talk to Mahomes, re reach out, go wherever he was, whether it's in Texas, whether he's going to be in Kansas City. It doesn't really matter. You got to kind of find a way to get with him and work on some of that chemistry. Now, if some of his issues being in the wrong spot come down to route running and understanding where you need to be on the field. That's a little bit different than having to meet with Mahomes because I do know he's been working diligently to understand routes better, understanding how he needs to use his his foot speed to really open up everything he can do with his routes, you know, his hip placement and, and working inside in and out of those routes, knowing exactly when to break, exactly when to be looking for the football, all these kind of things he has been working on, and you don't need to be with Mahomes for that. So. I'm not too worried about it impacting his play on the field. I know that he had a couple good plays in the first day of camp, which I expect from offenses coming into the first day of camp. Defenses are still got to find their footing. It's not, you can do a whole bunch of stuff on your own as a defensive player, specifically as a, as a cornerback. But until you get up with those guys that are speedy, they're fast, you know, Hardman and Hill are two of the fastest players in the league. So I understand you're going to have some struggles in that department and guys are going to score in, in the first day of camp. They're going to score all the way throughout camp. So again, it's the first day. Don't read too much into it unless it's Cornell Powell like me. So I see one thing and I just go off crazy about it because I can't contain my excitement about it. But again, we have to take everything with a little bit of grain of salt. And as much as we want to project, we have to we have to look at a situation and say that yes, this makes some sense. So let's get into a guy who I didn't expect to even be on the field right now, and DeAndre Baker. He got some snaps with I believe it was mostly with the second team. I'm not entirely sure on that. I have yet to see most of the uh the, the tweets, roundups, and things like that. But I do believe it was mostly with the second team. He may have gotten some with the first team defense. I'm not I'm not for sure yet. I know he played against Byron Pringle and McCall Hardman. So it's definitely possible he played against the first team offense. Um, that being said, I didn't expect him to be able to be on the field playing against, you know, Pringle, Hardman, and getting work in in camp. I thought that he was going to be still waiting for that time. So... Him saying he's close to 100%, maybe it's not too far off. Maybe we're going to see DeAndre Baker suiting up in the preseason. Maybe we'll see him in one of these preseason games to see what he looks like. It's very exciting to to be completely honest with you because with you, with a guy like DeAndre Baker who has all that talent, they can get on the field and really do some things as a, as a corner and give you a nice rotation, really, to help keep everybody fresh and to allow... Sneed to move around, which they appear to want to do with playing Mike Hughes more on the outside and having Ward and Hughes on the outside with Sneed on the inside when it comes into nickel, which is a little bit interesting to me, but I understand it. 
it allows you flexibility to be able to do that because I don't think Mike Hughes is necessarily a guy who's going to be successful on the outside. So maybe that switches to DeAndre Baker down the line and he comes in in those nickel sets and he, he starts to allow you more flexibility within your cornerback room. That's a huge addition. I thought it was going to be closer to week eight. Maybe it's closer to week three or four now. Maybe it's even beginning of the season where he can play a little bit here and there. So that's a huge development. I didn't expect him to do that. And I'm super excited to see that. And quickly, we're going to address one thing that I, I have been I have spoken out against, against Trey Smith being the starting right guard this season. And it has nothing to do with, you know, him as a player. I think he's going to be a good player. I just, I'm not saying it had nothing to do with him being a player, but I think that he's not ready yet. Now, I haven't had the benefit of working with him all, all, off, all off season like the Chiefs staff has. That's obvious within... With, well within reason for me to understand that, you know, some people do improve when you take them out of their, you know, out of their college system and, and team at Tennessee and get him into a, a group with, you know, one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL, Andy Heck. So it's very possible he's improved. Now, I think that the Kyle Long injury is what drove this for the most part because I don't think they think that LDT is ready to come in yet and play. And what this does really kind of allow them to do is run a lot more power scheme because I'm going to tell you now, Trey Smith is not the fleetest of foot. He's not. He That's just how he, that's just him. It's not his fault. He's a bigger guy and sometimes his feet just don't work as you want them to in a, you know, his own scheme. He's not going to be able to get out and pull a whole lot and help lead the way. He's not going to do that very much. He's just not an efficient puller. It's not his game. Not that he can't pull because he can sometimes. It's so inconsistent though. So you got to really work on some of these areas. But one thing about him is that he's a big, strong, powerful guy. Tooney is you know, a big, strong, powerful guy. Orlando Brown, a big, strong, powerful guy. I think that Comfrey can do some things in the power game as well. Remmers is probably not as suited for it anymore. But maybe Nyang, if they work him along... And he not only be, is that swing tackle, but he does become the starting right tackle. We don't really know about that yet. But I think it might allow them to really do what we've talked a little bit about this offseason and run more power scheme and allow guys to pull into gaps and just not necessarily have to lead the way around like we see a lot and get into the edge, but just pull from your spot into an A gap or just a B gap to let some of these plays unfold and let Clyde get into the second level quickly and efficiently and fast let him do things he does well so i'm excited to see that i hope trey proves me wrong but again this is day one he's the only guy now i got that right guard outside of Blythe, maybe that's played cow that played football last year so i think we have to take it with a grain of salt maybe they're trying to work ltt and early he was the second string right guard so i think that's a position battle we can watch and monitor and see what's going to happen I would love to be proven wrong. You know, you guys know that I'm trying to be as transparent as possible when it comes to this stuff. I've said a lot this offseason. I don't think he's ready, but that's going to be what we're going to monitor on. And as camp unfolds, we're going to do a lot more of these quick hitters to get you guys information. Uh, things you guys want to hear about, talk about, drop them in the comment section. Hopefully, Ryan will go through it and get it back to you tonight a little bit with Seth. I'm sure you guys are going to hear a lot about Seth uh, with Seth and Ryan tonight on the live stream. They're going to talk a whole lot about camp, whatever happens today as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Give me a little bit of a, 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 a drop down what you guys want in the comment section about not only things you want to hear about going forward, but who is going to be the biggest surprise this season in terms of playing time, not necessarily stats, but playing time. I want to see what you guys think about that. All right, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.